Well, hi everyone. Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to St. Catharines, Ontario. It's Alex from Until the Next Tea Blog, the home of organic golf reviews. So I'm here today. I'm just walking around a uh, closed golf course that I come to with my pup. Uh, we come out here and do a little bit of walking around. He finds sticks and does a little bit of uh, course cleanup here. <laughs> And uh, I come out and I uh, hit a few balls. I never go on the greens. They're too busy sleeping. And I never go on the teeing areas either. I just hit balls from the rough with one ball and one wedge. And in my hand today is actually just the uh, equalizer, the 48 degree uh, from Ben Hogan Golf. So uh, what's what, what am I going to talk about today? Uh, a couple things. First of all, I had a little chat today with Sherry Major, who's a media consultant from the PGA Show. Um, as we all know, the show this year is going to be of the virtual uh, variety, there's the word. And uh, anyways, uh, I had a lot of concerns going th into the show, mostly because I'm not very good when it comes to technology. Uh, I'm not very savvy with that kind of stuff. I'm one of those guys where you're lucky to get, the, get me to turn on the computer or my cell phone without any sort of frustration or, or anything like that. So uh, anyways, uh, um, I had a good talk with, with Sherry and it proves to be a very interactive show still with it being all virtual. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm a bit of a, of a, of a tech tard and I d didn't really understand how it was going to work. Uh, but my mind is at ease. I'm going to have tons of content coming from the show, uh, whether it's interviews, whether it's... Uh, you know, press releases, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's still gonna be, I think, a pretty effective week uh, with the vir virtual PGA show. So, uh, as you might be able to tell, there's a little bit of flurries going on right now. Got a nice big dark cloud coming over Lake Ontario right here. It just smells like snow. And yeah, snow does have a smell. Uh, but anyways, uh, um, today, I mean, it's cold here. I'm out here hitting golf balls, you know, no gloves on. You know, I'm au naturel here. Uh, miss hits, yeah, you feel them in the fingers. So speaking of miss hits, it was pretty cool down in Houston today, Houston, Texas, uh, at Champions Golf Club uh, in Houston. And of course, today was a delayed finish to the last major of the year, the US Women's Open. Uh, many congratulations go to A.L. Kim, uh, or A. Lim Kim, uh, who won her first event on the LPGA, actually. Uh, ironically enough, it was also a major, so congratulations, uh, well deserved. Uh, I think she has uh, zero irons in her bag. Uh, I'm not too sure what else she has in her, in her golf bag, but uh, anyways, it was a win for, for Mizuno irons at least. Um, you know, watching watching her on the final round, uh, which of course was today, Monday, uh, it was unbelievable the way that, that she rattled off three birdies to close it up. Um, you know, just sensational golf from, 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 from the young lady from Korea. Um, speaking of young ladies, uh, I just wanna say that I was really going for Caitlin Papp. Um, she's an amateur, she plays for the University of Texas, the Longhorns, uh, uh, the women Longhorns. And uh, boy, uh, you know, she was low amateur and I was really hoping that she was gonna make history by being the second amateur to win the US Women's Open. Um, it was really exciting there for a while. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of, of this young lady in the foreseeable future. My sentimental pick didn't do too well. I think she finished down at 44th place. That was Brooke Henderson. Uh, go Canada. Oh Canada. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what Brooke does in 2021 already. Uh, you know, she's just so likable. She's a great ambassador, not just for women's golf, but for golf in general. She's just, a, um, you know, just a, a great a great person. So what else am I going to talk about today? Let's see here. I've talked about the U.S. Women's Open today. Uh, I've talked about the PGA show. Oh, actually, I'm going to stick with the U.S. Open for a second or the U.S. Women's Open. So I have a little bit of an issue with the coverage that we that we had this week. Um, it's not because I didn't see a lot of Brooke Henderson because they don't choose who they who they put on the television and who they don't put on the television. Um, you know, especially in you know the first couple of days she was you know she was lurking around a little bit. But uh, anyways, um, the coverage in general I thought was a real oh is a shank. Uh, let's call it what it was. Uh, you had a tournament for the first time. You know, we had a real meaningful tournament in December. 
Uh, it was a great opportunity for the for golf in general, but it was also a great opportunity for the women's game to get out there and get to the masses just a little bit more. Um, golf Channel, I think they should be ashamed of, this, of themselves. Uh, they decided to air, uh, what was it, the QBE shootout. It's a exhibition event. I mean, let's call it what it is. It shouldn't even be worth points for for the uh, uh, for the world rankings or anything like that. Um, and for them to actually go to that live, as opposed to the U.S. Women's Open, I thought was a bit of a a bit of a faux pas. It was a real mistake. And if I'm the uh, commissioners of the LPGA, Michael Wan, or the Ladies European Tour, I'm pretty pissed about that. That my tour didn't get coverage when it was the only real pertinent golf thing going on. You know, I mean. December a major um, and it felt like a major too because look at the scores I mean four four under one three under was I think the runner-up and then after that it was a series of evens and, and over pars in typical USGA fashion uh, so you know there was some really good golf uh, whether it was the USGA or, or whoever put out the hashtag women worth watching I don't know what the TV rankings were like I hope that they were uh, I hope that they were very good but they could have been a hell of a lot better with better with better coverage and again I think it was just uh, overall pretty disappointing uh, I actually tried to go with peacock for a little bit and that was a that was a waste that was I would never ever pay for that subscription to watch peacock coverage for golf um, you know, actually, I was going with the with the feeds from Sky Sports, to be honest, uh, Sky Sports Golf. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, so I just think they could have provided better coverage for the women's for women's golf in the U.S. Women's Open. Again, a major, meaningful golf in December. It never happens, and it probably won't happen again. That said, I wouldn't mind seeing the LPGA move their uh, say the LPGA uh, Championship to. December if they could uh, just have some sort of major or get some sort of coverage out there uh, you know I know that goes against the grain but I really want to see the women's golf game uh, get more exposure I really want to see them you know uh, get the get the props that they deserve the reality is most most of us out here that golf we can relate better to that swing in the first place you watch them you know some of the girls they average 235 off the tee uh, they average 253 off the tee sound familiar you know, so their 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 swings are more relatable. You know, the, the percentage of golfers that bomb it consistently over 300 yards off the tee. Um, you know, depending on what they do with the rest of the game. You know, maybe they can't putt, maybe they can't, uh, uh, you know, chip or whatever. But when you're constantly driving it that far, maybe you should be, you know, putting your money where your mouth is and going out on mini tours and and giving it a whirl out there. Because, you know, if I could drive it at this point in my life, a steady 300 yards or, or 305, like a lot of guys claim, um, I know I would be doing it. I mean, I have. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, 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 their swings are just more relatable. You watch them, their tempo. There's some girls that do hit it pretty darn long, and Van Damme's one of them. Uh, was it Maria Fossey? She's another one that's a, a big bomber out there. I always thought that uh, Lexi Thompson was a big bomber too, and she hits the golf ball very well. Uh, the funny thing about her is her average is, is only 267.33 or something like that. It's in the 267 range for, for average drive. And of course, uh, just finishing up this little bit of a this little video here, or actually it's, it's turning out to be a bit lengthy. Um, I just want to talk about the PNC Championship this week. Of course, all eyes are going to be on one father and son pairing. That's going to be Tiger and Charlie Woods. Uh, you know, that's going to be the draw. The ratings are going to be huge because of it. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I just hope people don't really put the kid under too much of a microscope. I mean, T Tiger was as a three-year-old under the microscope, and now it's way different with social media and everyone having the cameras and cell phones and people can lurk behind bushes at U.S. Kids Tour events. Uh, there's been some pretty creepy shots of that in the past too. Uh, but anyways, uh, it is what it is. Uh, so anyways, um, and just one last thing. I know that a lot of people are going to say regarding the coverage, you know, that PGA getting the coverage ahead of the LPGA. Uh, it has to do with, man with the manufacturers, with sponsors, uh, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. And 
yeah, the sponsor dollars that they mean something for the TV stations and for for uh, everybody involved here. But man, it makes me wonder a lot too if they don't cover the LPGA as much because there's a lot of international flags on the leaderboard every week, week in and week out. A lot of international flags, and I'm not, I'm not just talking um, Korea. I'm not talking, you know, Japan, Thailand. Uh, I, I'm talking, you know, Sweden's up there quite a bit, and uh, you know, England, Charlie Hall. Uh, you know, so there's there's international names that are up there. It makes you wonder a little bit, uh, even though that there's a, a, a hell of a lot uh, good, uh, good things going on with with women's golf in the U.S. Um, it just makes you wonder if that's why they tend to shy away from that coverage, uh, you know. And if so, it's a shame because the women they are worth watching. So signing off from a closed dormant golf course, and Muskoka says uh, bye too. He's uh, down there uh, just doing whatever it is that he's doing. I think he found another golf ball and he's chewing on it. Uh, we're gonna get going. We're gonna go home. Gonna go, go warm up. My fingers are frozen, uh, and that's gonna be about it. Gonna post this video on YouTube and post it on to until the next tee. So signing off from the closed dormant golf course that I'm nattering on about. It's Alex, and we'll see you on the next tee.